Susan and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you something. I bought this kit from AliExpress from Quao, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, Q-I-A-O glass and bead store. One of my subscribers, Lily, suggested that I try these kits. She thought the beads were very nice and they were wonderful for beginners. So I thought, okay, I'll order five of them, see what I think of them, see what I can do with them. And if I like them, I'll share them with you. So obviously I liked them. I'll show you everything they come with. They come with 10 pin backs. They come with five pairs of earring hooks, four of these little bead trays. These are really convenient for scooping up beads, for storing little beads, separating beads, I love these. You get 10 pieces of hard felt, which is a decent size you get. I was very surprised it came with this vinyl, and I've never used vinyl before, I've only used ultra suede, and I have to say, I recommend vinyl for backing. This was actually really easy to use, I was worried it was going to tear, but it didn't, it was very nice. Now it came with these needles, go throw these in your sewing kit. They're not for beading. You're going to need to buy some beading needles. I bought some inexpensive ones. These are just basic cousin needles. You can buy these at any craft store. They're in the beading section. I use a size 10 beading needle. It's the easiest to thread and my favorite. It also comes with this stretchy monofilament. Put that over with your sewing stuff because that's another dud. That one doesn't go through these beads twice. It's impossible to get through any uh, beading needle. It's just not worth it. Instead, I'm using some Nymo thread. I have it in different colors, but any type of beading thread will do the trick. String, number one, you can't see it. And the other thing is it's thick, so it doesn't go through a beading needle. It's just too big to get through the hole. Now the beads are actually quite nice. And I want to show you some things that I've made with them. It also comes with sequins. Sorry about my snoring dog. The sequins are actually something I've never shown you how to use before, but you can do lots of neat things. And I thought I'd swatch out the sequins with the beads so you could get a better idea that the beads, how they looked with the compatible sequins. And these were really pretty. Now, I did not use these little bugle cup beads in with the sequins because they just didn't work out as nice making such a pretty flower. Now, if you did a larger flower, these work out perfectly, but since I was just swatching them out. Now, all of the kits come with all of this stuff. I'm just going to show you the beads for each kit because it'll get too confusing seeing all of this stuff again. So now that you see that this is just the beading set, this is what I'll be showing you in the future with all of them because now that you've seen, you get all those supplies with each set. So I've gotten all of these kits were $9 with shipping. They were really inexpensive to try this out. And let me show you what I created. And this pin I used, I used the sequins and all of the color beads that came here except for the white ones. I was just trying to stick with the purple here. And how I started this was I just had a simple rhinestone in the center that I just encircled with beads and then added my polymer clay beads at the bottom. Now on the back, I want you to see how it finished off. Now I used purple thread, but you can see it finished off quite, quite well. I did make a little boo-boo when I was cutting the vinyl and the vinyl is not forgiving with that. The ultra suede's a little bit nicer, but I wanted to show you that it does show if you make a mistake. I, that's why I left it there instead of putting another backing on. But I wanted to show you that it's a nice looking piece either way. It wasn't a big deal, it is on the back. And that you can create something quite nice with these inexpensive beads. Now the other way that you can use these beads is you can use them with your sequins. And I'm going to show you how to sew the sequins on. This is very basic. And many people would see these sequins and just think they can go straight across with them. Well, I did a lot like this. This little edging, it's very dimensional and sparkly. That was done just using the same stitch and the same way that I did the flowers. And so you can create a lot more dimension and it looks like it's a lot more work than it actually is because what we're doing is putting on numerous beads and sequins at the same time. So this is actually only six stitches and this is only three stitches. Now to sew a basic straight line of sequins, it's pretty simple. I always make a line or whatever design you want first. It just gives you something to follow. I'm just coming up through the middle here, picking up a sequin and I'm I'm holding it down right in the center there and then coming backwards on one side. 
so that it pulls it down. These are a little bit fiddly, especially to do this way. And then I'm going back up through the middle and back down on that line. So to add another one, I just continue that same process of coming up in the middle. Now another way you can put them in is just go straight up through the center of the sequin and put a bead in the center. And this gives you a lot more texture and dimension. And it's only one stitch, so you can do that much faster. But my favorite is to go up in between this stitch that I've already done laying those sequins down and now doubling up and putting my sequins on top with a bead so that I get more texture. Now you can see with these faceted sequins how much sparkle they give, but adding even more is one in between on top here. And I'm all about texture if you haven't noticed. I love the flat, the matte, the shiny, the different textures of the sequins at different angles. But now you can see how adding that extra layer on top really gave that some dimension and how it really looks super sparkly now. But on the other side, we're going to do our little drops. So I have a pattern here. I have a dot here and three dots. That is exactly how I'm laying out this little branch. So I have three branches here and it starts out basically with the three dots and a dot up here. And the center dot up here is the one that reaches out to the branches. So that is how I create this pattern. Now you can create this edging anything. You can create this as just a drop. You'll see I have used it in one of my pieces. You can create this as half a flower. So there's lots of different ways you can create this and just a matter of stacking your beads and centering them. And we're going to start out right in the center here. I'm going to add, because I have longer branches on this one, three seed beads, one sequin, one seed bead, one sequin, one seed bead, and final a sequin. So I end up with a sequin. That gives me this pattern with the three seed beads and three sequins with two seed beads in between. And once you get that pattern, that's just one stitch. And you get all those beads put on in that one stitch. So you're just pulling it through like that. Then we're going back up to the center here and adding that same combination of seed beads and sequins. So this goes very quickly and this gives you a lot of dimension and it looks like you spent a lot more time than you did, but you don't have to tell anyone that. And now we're just going through that accompanying dot. And I just like to lay this out even and this one is uneven here. So I'll just move that last sequin to wherever it's more convenient. This is not etched in stone. It's just a pattern that you lay down so it gives you a guideline to follow. And we'll put our last stitch in on the other side here. And see how we created that beautiful little spray? And you can see how you can use that in all of your work. It just depends how long you want this piece in here to be, how many beads you add. I added two when I wanted them to go around this rhinestone, and I added three for these little legs here just because I wanted them longer and make more of a fan design. Now to create our flower, you're making a dot in the center, and that will be the center of your flower, like here. And then you're doing a petal, a petal, petal, a petal. So you have yourself a little design there to follow. Now, do you have to follow this exactly? Is it perfect every time? No. This is just a layout. Now I do a little locking stitch just to get my thread. Now I'm coming up the center, and this time I'm just adding two of my seed beads, one of my sequins, a seed bead, a sequin, a seed bead, and a sequin. So you're adding three sequins. And now I'm just making one stitch going from the center down to that petal. And we're just going to repeat that all around the circle. And that's how I create the flower. So watch how quickly I can build this flower. 
because you're putting all those beads on one shot, it goes very quickly. Just come back up in the center and go do the sides. And there you have your completed flower. Now, if you put the petals closer together, you get a tighter flower. I put them a little bit further out here. I got a little bit of a larger flower. So it really just depends on the area that you're working in, but you can see how pretty and sparkly that is. Now, how I create all my designs around all my beaded pieces here is very simple. You're just basically adding four beads. I show this in so many of my videos. So I'm going around the circle. I'm just going to add four beads. So I have my four beads, I'm pulling them to the end, and I'm using this contrasting thread so that you can see it better, and pushing them back as far as I can get them, and then going up in between the last two, and go through those last two seed beads, and then continue just adding four beads. Now you do this for the entire process of adding beads, wherever you're going, and you can change the colors, the size, the direction, whatever you want, but just adding four beads like that and going through the last two. And then when you get back to the beginning, you just go through that first bead that you connected while you're doing a circle. So here's a piece I'm just finishing up and this was the blue kit and I'm just, I made it into a pin, you could call it a leaf of feather, but to sandwich together the vinyl and the felt, it looks kind of sloppy there. I sew it together with some beads and to do that, it's really easy. I'm simply, where I finished off here, going to continue. You take one bead, you go through both layers of fabric. So you add that one bead and you go through that bead and it will just make it sit on the end. It's basically a blanket stitch and you're adding beads. So you're going back up through both pieces of fabric and then back up through that bead. Just continuing that all the way down. And when I get to this first bead that I put on, I just go through that last one to connect them all together. And that's all there is to it. And here's the green set. This came with some emerald green sequins and some beautiful kind of limey green cut beads, and then this beautiful array of green beads and some wonderful white pearls that went with it. These were really nice color selections. Let me show you how the little sequins swatched out. This was all of them. I even used the cut beads on this flower, but it doesn't sit quite right. Those beads are just a little too long for it, so that's why I decided to just use the seed beads for the sequins on the other swatches. They came out perfectly, and you can really see how pretty these green sequins come out. Now, what can you make with these? I'll show you what I made. Here's a Natasha bead that I created just using some scrap clay and used the green beads to create some beautiful earrings. This was the brighter green beads that I used as a bezel, and I used those little cut beads around the edges. That's what gives all that extra little sparkle. So these were just those inexpensive set of beads, only the green set. And I also used the crystals that came in a box that I'll show you at the end. I found some boxes of crystals that were great little sample boxes to see if you like to work with some crystals also. And here's the blue beads. Now, I know they shorted me one of the boxes. There were supposed to be four boxes of beads in here. I went back and looked at the listing. And so they shorted me one of the lighter blue colors is what it is. Accidents happen. I, I'm sure I probably messed up somebody's order along the way too. No big deal. I've still made some beautiful things with this. You just saw the feather that I created with it. All of those little sequins and you can see how pretty those blue sequins come out. And they give you nice contrasting beads because this was just these blue beads and then here I have the other colors swatched out. I got carried away making these little flowers. They're so fun. This is from my Muddy Clay Is It Wonderful video. And I created one of these from a button using Muddy Clay and I used some mica powders on it. You can use eyeshadows also. And I created these earrings using those same beads 
and then I put the flowers in the top here so that you get that extra sparkle and dimension. And I've outlined all of these pieces just with those same beads. So you can create some really interesting stuff with these beads. Yeah. And here's the neutral palette. I really liked this neutral palette. This was probably going to be my favorite, I thought, because it was so elegant and so easy to mix things in with. I swatched out the sequins for this and I put some hot pink Sharpie marker in the back of this because I wanted to see if these AB kind of sequins would change color with the background. And they did a little bit, but I think they stayed pretty true to form on the white. And they really are elegant. They're kind of bridally looking, but I really like this AB color and it looked so pretty with the ivory and the pearls. They were really striking. So I really found this color kit combination to be quite elegant. I created with that was also this pendant piece that I haven't finished. I just put a backing on it. I was going to add some crystals to it, but I felt like I should just be true to the video and just use the beads that came in the video. I did add the pearl in the center, just like I added the crystal and some polymer beads on the others because everything needs crystals and polymer. But here you can see just adding a half pearl. This is a 14 millimeter pearl. I picked these up off of eBay a couple years ago, so I'm sure you could probably still find them. But it really created a beautiful flower. And it's got some great sparkle. Those sequins are really, really pretty. Then I created these earrings. And these earrings, I've added some polymer clay beads, just little flower beads, and some rhinestones in the center. The rest are all those beads that came with the kit. And I just wanted to show you what you could do with them. Now they're not perfect. You can tell that in the fringe. There's a little bit off on them in the fringe. If that bothers you, then you're going to have to buy the high-end beads. But just to start out, I still think these are very pretty earrings and that I've gotten a lot of nice looking things from some of the most inexpensive beads you can buy. And I also created this using that neutral set. This is just a piece of shibori ribbon that I had a little scrap of and some polymer clay beads. I did not add any, any crystals or anything to this. This is just those simple little beads, but you can see those little cut beads have a great shimmer to them. They look like there's crystals almost. And on the back, I just wanna show you how nice they finish off. And all the earrings are finished like this on the back also. Now, here is the black and white set. I was a little skeptical about this set and was positive the neutral set was gonna be my favorite, but this one actually turned out to be my favorite set. This one can go with pretty much anything. I think I was really impressed with these sequins because they're more of a matte finish. I thought they were more elegant looking. I felt like they weren't too sparkly. They had almost a contrast with the matteness to them. And I loved them with the silver beads. I really thought that they were just perfect and just different looking. And what I created with these was this pair of earrings. And these earrings are just those flat pearls, once again, that I used in the other piece, and some polymer clay beads, and just those black and silver beads just layered in there. So you can see, you can get some really elegant pieces if you just mix the colors up. Really could make five pairs of earrings or 10 pins. You, there is enough product here, I have to say, I was surprised. And on the bottom here, you can see I've added those sequins the same way I would in a flower so that it gives a lot of dimension, but because... Now the same company on their site, since I was on their site already, I thought, oh, I'm gonna try, see what else they have. This was what they called a bracelet kit. I only bought two of these. And it came with this strong and stretchy stuff. Save this for your other craft projects. I don't use this stretchy cord with my stuff. It always breaks on me. I've never had any luck with it. If you've had luck with it, good for you. Other types of crafts, it might be good, but not for my jewelry. Now it does come with these needles and some of you may like these needles. These are the wide eye needles. If you have trouble threading a needle, you see I can almost put my fingers through it. It's a big wide eye. It's a long needle. It's probably four inches long. And they have the two inch one, the three inch one. They gave me five needles in this. This was worth it just for the needles. And so you can just put your thread through. And for a certain type of bead weaving, these are really convenient. But if you're using some sixes and eights, these are fun. I actually like these needles a lot. And they came in this big tube. And with the purple ones, there's a raspberry color metallic, very pretty seed bead in there and then the other side has this 
kind of weird purpley, I don't know if you'd call it purpley or brownish. It's kind of an odd color. And this one came also with these lavender teardrops and there's about two and a half inches. So I think they just fill up the box. There's about four and a half inches of the five millimeter bicones. And these are pretty even, they're nice quality. And this is those rondelles with the faceted edge. And there's about two and a half inches of these. But you can see these aren't really a purpley color. They're more of an eggplant kind of a gray color. They're actually still very pretty, but if you're looking for purple purple, these are a little bit off shade. And then these four millimeter bicones, wow, almost 17 inches on here. So this one, they really put a lot in the box. So you've got all these bicones, these rondelles. So for just a few dollars, you got those. And then you got those needles that were the large eye needles. Now these large eye needles, I've paid the same amount for these needles that I paid for all of these beads and these needles. So this I thought was a very good deal, but I'm not sure what the price is anymore. The prices as I've looked at them have been changing. So I don't want to quote a price because I can't guarantee that that price will be the price that you get in your country with shipping, but go check them out and see how reasonable they are for you. Now with the smaller box, rather than just showing you the beads that are inside other than the little seed beads, you have these pink seed beads, which are a real pretty little light pink, kind of like a creamy pink. And then they had these silver line seed beads that were a beautiful light pink. There's a whole beautiful light pink palette going on here. The strand of teardrops was about three inches, about 15 or 20 teardrops. I didn't really count them. And then there was some five millimeter bicones. These are actually quite nice. They're pretty even. And there was five inches of those. And these were really pretty. They're like a rondelle with a faceted edge. They're very sparkly. I really liked these a lot. And there's just three inches of those. And then there were some four millimeter bicones, 10 inches. So you got about 10 inches of the four millimeter bicone. So there was quite a bit in this little tiny, almost pillbox size. I was pretty much surprised how much there really was in this little box once I strung them. Now with these larger boxes, I did not string all of these, but I did string the one with the purple because I figured they're probably all about the same amount. And the purple came once again with the same metallic and purple beads that were in the smaller box with 20 of these hearts. And these hearts are pretty big. They're, I would say they're probably about 14 or 16 millimeter. And they're quite nice. And they're all consistent. Two strands of these teardrops, and these look like they're probably about four by eight. I'm just guessing. I can't really guarantee that, but they're very nice. As you can see, the cuts are very consistent on these. And this was quite long. They're about 14 inches. So that would be like 28 inches. There's quite a bit there. And I really liked these round beads. They were pretty consistent. They're not totally consistent, but I have to say on all their beads, I didn't have any miss holes or side cuts or anything that was really off. They were pretty nice quality. I was actually quite surprised for the price. So there's 22 inches and these are about a five millimeter round ball that's faceted. These are a four millimeter bicone. That's 30 inches of four millimeter bicones. Somehow for me in my brain, I process the length more than I do if they said there's a thousand beads or 500 beads or 50 beads. I process how long is it that I can work with it. And these rondelles that are about a four millimeter rondelle would be 26 inches since there's two strands of these 13 millimeter rondelles. So that's a really nice deal. Now these kits were just crystals. That's all they are. They were just crystals. They came with some of these little packages of seed beads. This was the cut ones, and this was like some clear ones. I was happy they came in a bag. They come in this really nice box. It really is full of crystals, and they are very sparkly. The little hearts were fabulous. As you can see, the sparkle really is happening. They have a beautiful AB finish on them. They're very, very pretty. I was really impressed with how nice these were. 
but they were all relatively reasonably priced. And if you're starting out, you're looking for reasonably priced because you can spend a fortune on beads. One was the turquoise. I thought the turquoise were really pretty color turquoise. They came with some silver line turquoise beads here and the turquoise hearts were very pretty. They were just a really nice color and you can see how sparkly they are, which is always important to me. And you got some teardrops and some round ones and then some bicones and then some rondelles in this one. But you can see how nice and sparkly and these were pretty nominal for how much is in here. So I hope I gave you lots of ideas here. I hope I've shown you lots of neat products. And if you thought about bead embroidery and didn't really know if you wanted to invest a lot, give one of these kits a try. What have you got to lose? You might love it. It might be your new hobby and you can order all the colors. If not, you didn't invest a whole lot. Give it to a girlfriend and see if she likes it. I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.